All right, good afternoon. We're on third week of our cross check, and we're looking at our lives in light of the cross. Uh, scripture tells us that the Bible is like a mirror, that when you look at it, you get to check, and the Lord gets to expose what's in our hearts. So our series, Cross Check, really are very hard sayings and conversations that Jesus had with His disciples, and we're going to look at that today. And our topic for today is something that's often spoke about outside the walls of the church. In fact, many of us get invited with this topic. And we get to speak about this topic in secular settings, in business organizations. And it's a topic about greatness. I think everybody in the world wants to be great. Nobody woke up and said, Lord, I pray today that I will not be great. No, everybody wants to be great. Everyone wants to succeed in life. Many believe that they're destined for greatness. And I believe in this statement that we're all destined for greatness. Tingnan mo yung katabi mo, mukha bang destined for greatness yan? Or destined for... Wag na nga. Okay, so, right? But the question to ask is, what kind of greatness? What perspective or worldview of greatness am I destined for? Yung definition ba ni Lord of greatness to the world's definition of greatness, different. And we're going to look at that today. If you believe you're destined for greatness, I want you to listen to this message because I believe this could be God's word for you. Uh, a week ago, I was invited to speak. And prior to me speaking, there was a speaker that they also invited. And the guy was a millionaire. The guy was successful. The guy was great, right? There was a guy who many would want to be at that field. It would be that guy. And they had to flew him in from abroad to speak. And when he was speaking, he started talking about his dream to own a sports car, right? And I think he made it already in less than two years. And as he was speaking, the whole narrative or the whole story of his message was, if I'm in the corporate, I won't be able to buy my dream car. And so I had to now make things outside the corporate world for me to reach my goal. Now, it was a good talk. It was a nice talk. It was motivating for many. But something was, you know, maybe there was an unrest in my heart. Not because it was wrong. It was not a church service. It was a speaker who most likely had no faith in God. And so I was listening to the one-hour talk. And I was saying, wow, if all of life is about this car, how empty life is, right? How a person can speak about his journey of getting a car and motivate everybody in the room that for you to be great, you've got to have this car. I said, wow, something's not right in my soul about this as much as it sounded really nice and tempting. I'm tempted with sports car, not because I would want one, but Alam mo naman, di ba, pag nag-park ka sa Greenies, then a red sports car park beside you, it's like, oh, okay, selfie time, yeah, right? Dream ko to, yung polong suot ko, di ba? So, right? And I think we're all fascinated with it because in some ways, the world has told, told us that to have this car, you're good, you've made it, you're great. People now, you're, you're the difference maker in the room. You go into the room, everybody does public transportation, but you've got a sports car, right? And your nearest competition is a guy who owns a Benz that old people buy, not you. You're young, and you're successful, and you have this car, right? And, and this is the world. In fact, there would be apps and meditations, 10 minutes a day, and you will become great. It's either... Uh, there's Always a lesson or a curriculum telling us there's a shortcut to greatness. By the age of 30, you can reach your dreams. By the age of 35, you're living la vida loca, right? By the age of, you know, and, and you have those or you download this app, listen to this, 10 minutes a day, you become great. Either there's a shortcut or there's a trivial pursuit of greatness. 
get this car, have this amount of money, then you're great. All those are great, but I think not great as how Jesus would define greatness or how a Christian should pursue greatness. And this is what we want to talk about today. In Matthew chapter 20, it's a story of the mother of the sons of Zebedee, James and John, and, and they, they had an appointment with Jesus in verse 20. Then the mother, looks like their mama's boy, all right, of the sons of Zebedee came up to him with her sons. And kneeling before Jesus, she asked him for something. And I want you to see the picture. The mom went in there with the two sons, and the mom kneels down. A posture of worship and respect because she was about to ask something really big. And, the moms, and, and Jesus said to her, what do you want? She said to him, say that these two sons of mine are to sit on your right hand and at your left in your kingdom. Simple lang naman, Lord. Sana sila yun nasa picture. Right? In the right and in the left side of your chair. Right? This was a place of prominence place of greatness that a mom would want every child to have. Am I right? Sino dito mga nanay? Marami kayong ginawang paraan. Diba? Binigyan nyo ng regalo yung teacher para pumasa yung... You would do everything so that your... Okay, naalala ko yung childhood days namin, okay? Uh, where you would do everything to, to make sure your son would be in a place of greatness or uh, prominence. And this was what the mom was doing. Lord, if only you could bring my two sons, one on your right, one on your left. These are reserved for special people. You see, the three of them went to Jesus, bowing down, kneeling down, asking for a crown. And this sounds and looks familiar to somebody like me, who has the capacity to come and worship God in a humble posture, but really asking for something that's just for me. Trying to get the glory that does not belong to me, but I would go to church to get it. Or I would go to church to get what I want, and that's why I worship God. Or I'm reading the Bible because everything about the Scripture is related to the context where I live in as if it was written just for you and you alone. And we can come before God with a humble posture, but in our hearts, it's not right. And Jesus knew this. Right? The three of them were trying to pursue a crown. The crown of greatness. The evidence of greatness. Greatness as how the world would perceive it. Now, every day, no exage, every day, people talk about greatness. There are viral videos every day of conversations under the sun that would Talk about who is the greatest. I'll give you an example. Pag may ka sa basketball, ang debate, every day, may magproproduce ng video, who is the greatest basketball player in the world? Tatlong pinagpipilian nila. Lebron, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant. Right? And they would have stats, and they would have the age, and they would have, and they would do videos every day of the minions of these three guys whose main goal in life is to worship Jordan, Lebron, and Kobe would make a case of who's the greatest. And people would watch, millions of people would watch and, and waste their time watching about who's the greatest when there's really no answer or they got the wrong answer. Because the greatest is who? <laughs> Larry Bird. Okay. <laughs> right? But they would debate. Or this week, viral na viral. There's a Filipino billionaire in the Forbes list of billionaire. Right? Because of the trademark sipag at chaga. All day, all night. Alright, so, andun siya. Alright? Sa listahan ng mga billionario. Right? We have now a billionaire in the Forbes list of billionaires. And now they're asking, who's the richest one? Is it Jeff Bezos or Steve Jobs or Bill Gates or Buffett? Diba? And they're, they're asking this question and people would debate and take life principles out of it. Why? There's a fascination for us. Who's greater this or that. Who's, you know, and that's innate in us. Because there's always that longing to be great. But because we grew up in a very sinful world, the definition of greatness has changed through the years. 
Because if you look at Scripture, there's so many word great in the Bible that mentions about the nature and the character of God and how God stood down to make His people and the church great. But then it, the definition of greatness has changed. In fact, sino sa inyo dito? Whom are you here? You've used the line. Who do you love more? Daddy or mommy? What are you doing? You're trying to up your spouse in the hearts of your kids. Yeah. Sino mas guapo? Si Tito number one, Tito number two, Tito number three. My 500 dollars for you. Right? What are you doing? You're poisoning the minds of the young people who cannot process and you're manipulating them and then they grow up being entitled and spoiled because they grew up in an environment. Sino mas favorite mo? Siya ko. Diba? And, and you're doing that because there's an innate desire to up somebody because that's the definition of greatness. I have to be greater than you. Yeah. We do that every day without thinking. Because we would, kaya mga girls, yan yung mga pinakagusto nilang bati, tumaba ka ngayon, di ba? Para, oh, ibig sabihin, mas payat ako ngayon, di ba? So, happy ka na ganun, right? Ang bati mo. Why? The insecurities of wanting to be thinner and more beautiful and more makapal ang kila than the other. Alright? Ewan ko kung gusto niyo yun. Alright? So, right? Kasi sa ibang bansa, guwapo yung ganito. So, Again, why is that? The pursuit of greatness. I grew up in a family that all wants to be great. Right? Ngayon, nagdidebate, sino pinakapayat? Of course ako! Right? So, out of all the siblings, if you look at the picture, evidence-wise would show you, I'm the thinnest. But, but they would add, my brother-in-law, of course he's the thinner one, but he's not our bloodline, so he's not counted, right? Because I need to be the, the thinnest one, right? Or sino pa mas guapo, ganyan. And all the meaningless debates to kill time just so you'll feel good. Sino sa inyo, nasa barkada kayo, ganun din. Pag pera na pinag ayan na, pataasan na, pata ayan na, mag na. Anong gamit, anong suot, saan nabili, what cruise you've attended, and what, you know. And all these things that we try to up one another because we want to be, what? Great. Consciously and unconsciously. So Jesus answered them, You do not know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am to drink? They said to him, We are able. I'll Tagalog it for you. Right? Ano sabi ni Lord? Hindi mo alam anong tinatanong mo, kaibigan. Magbababa ako ka ba sa cross? Ano sabi ng dalawa? Oo naman, oo naman. You do not know what you're asking. Are you willing to drink the cup I'm about to drink? Are you going to take the sacrifice that nobody wants? Because I'm the only one who is qualified to do so. And the two out of pride because they want the crown said what? Of course. Yeah, sure. Lahat gusto maging Manny Pacquiao. Lahat gusto maging, oh, successful siya. Tingnan mo, galing sa hirap, di ba? Walang education, tapos ganyan. In-interview pa nga ni Karen, tapos ganyan, 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 di ba? Ang daming kwento. Right? Pero tingnan mo, sikat, di ba? Ganyan, ganyan. Wow. Question, willing ka ba magpa ganito? Are you willing to drink the cup? Or you just want the crown? Are you willing to go to training? Are you willing to do all the things he's been doing to reach that goal? This was what the Lord was saying. Don't go after the crown because the path to greatness is what? The cross. In my kingdom, it's different from the kingdom of the world. The kingdom of the world is flashing your money and showing how great you are and how many people you control and lead. In my kingdom, nobody might even notice because it's a path of suffering and cross. Are you willing to drink this cup? If you're going to follow Jesus, the question is, are you willing to drink the cup? Do you read your Bible every day? Do you pray? Do you fast? How's your walk with God? Are you willing, really, to drink this cup of mine? And that's not even the suffering part. That's the easy part. Magbabasa ng Bible. Hirap nga, hindi ko maintindihan. Wow! Kung hirap ka na dyan, how are you going to follow Jesus? Without the discipline, you can't follow the Lord. And the Lord was saying, if you want to be great, you've got to learn how to drink the cup 
Are you willing to drink the cup where I'm going to drink from? Are you ready for persecution? Are you ready for suffering? Are you ready for pain, church? Oh, may ganun. Kala ko blessing lang. Breakthrough lang. Prosperity. Healing. Walang problem. No. Jesus was very upfront with the disciples and telling them, the path of greatness is not the cross, it's not the crown, but the cross. Are you willing to take up the cross daily and follow me? It's heavy. Look at Revelations 4, verse 10 to 11. And they lay their crowns. This is the picture of the end. When people are in heaven, Christians are in heaven. And they lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, O Lord our God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things and they exist because you created what you please. I hope you get to see the picture. The mom knelt down in worship. Pwedeng gawin mo tong dalawang, right and your left. In Revelation, the people who had crowns that they've received entered into the throne and when they saw the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the reaction was, oh, Lord, ano ba tong crown? Let, it, let me lay it down. Or in the Greek word, toss it to you. I don't even need the crown because I've seen your face. The Lord was saying, don't go after the crown. Walk the path of the cross. Because once you see God, you would ultimately say, He is my reward in the crown that I've received. Bariya lang to. It's nothing compared to be in your presence of God that even the elders laid their crowns and toss it to the Lord and say, we worship you, God. You see, all of life, we try to go and pursue greatness. At the end of the day, if it's the world's definition of greatness, how empty it could be. I'd like to share a quote from Darlene Sheck famous worship leader. And here's what she said. And I don't know if you'll agree, but I totally agree. Right? She said, human beings were never created to receive glory. We are to give glory back to God. What was she saying? Sh- 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 <laughs> what is she sh- saying? Tatagalogin ko. Para hindi ako masyashe. Okay. Right? Para sinasabi niya, pag ikaw, kinukuha mo lahat ng glory, masisira ka. You can't do it. It will destroy you. I've just watched the life of Freddie Mercury. Right? And you look at, sobrang talented, sobrang galing. Yeah? Kahit na siya may-ari nung drugstore, ano nangyayari sa kanya? Nalunon sa drugs. Right? Kaya Mercury Drugs. Okay? Right? And what happened? In spite of the talent, he had no friends. All the money paid for his friendship, paid for the applause of men, a very empty life. Because glory given by humans to us were not created to receive glory. Dapat maruno ka mag-deflect. Opinion lang ng tao yan. Sa akin ngayon. Walang ibig sabihin yan. It has no meaning. How many people today, their emotional ano, uh, quotient, they're very low. Why? Because they grew up always with affirmation. Nakanood naman na kayo ng mga American Idol na audition, di ba? Na they audition and they could not sing. And they're so mad because their parents told them they could sing. Right? We grew up in that generation where everything should be good job, great, you're the best, you're the best. When that person fails because there's no grit in him, always looking for the affirmation and the glory. Right? Sibi mo aro aro mo sabihin yan. Na nagsisino ng alinkana. Ikaw ang pinakamagaling na bata sa Pilipinas. Gaganyan ni mo anak mo. Araw-araw. 
Siyempre, lalaki siyang feeling niya. Isa ang regalo ng, ni Lord sa mundo. Right? Unless there's a balance of grace and truth of how he needs God and he shouldn't receive the glory and he learns how to humble himself, he would think entitled. He would have a weak spirit, weak emotions, always hurt easily. Oh, sinabi ganyan. May, nag, may nagganyan ng video ko out of the one million views. May isang nagganon. I want to erase it, right? <laughs> Why? Glory, 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 glory. Sikat ka, galing mo, galing mo, galing mo, galing mo, galing mo. Right? We're not... Kaya magulat ka no maraming sikat dati ngayon. Hindi na sikat. Doon sila naging Christian. Have you seen so much, so many sports heroes, celebrities, politicians who got the applause of men growing up always in the spotlight. Now, they're no longer in the spotlight. Destroyed them until they met Christ and realized, I'm not created to receive glory. It will just destroy me. Right? Even with pastors. So don't, please don't treat me like God. Don't adjust everything because of me. Right? You'll destroy you and me. Right? We're all human beings, not created for glory, to receive glory. Dapat din deflect mo yan. Mahirap yan, ha? It should come to a point. And here's the challenge. And kunin mo lang muna, kahit di mo pa masyado matake. Right? It should come to a point in your life where it doesn't really matter what other people think about you. Okay? Let that sink in. Right? Right? You, you come to me later and say, that's the greatest preaching ever. Ganyan. Thank you. Right? But I cannot put that in my heart and in my soul. It will destroy me. Why? Because the other person said, inantok daw siya sa preaching ko. So sino nagsasabi ng totoo? Right? Yung nasa likod, natutulog ka. De, lalak lang. So, right? <laughs> diba? Parang, so, medyo wala nang effect sa akin nun. May natutulog ngayon. Okay lang, baka pagod ka. Naintindihan naman kita. Right? Once we get the cross, and get to see the majesty of God, the response is, Lord, we toss the crown back to you. I, in your presence, it's like, ano ba to? Pinagyayabang ko ba, Lord, sa'yo na to? Ikaw naman yan. So all the things the world's trying to talk about and, and put their effort in to achieve a certain level of what, we look at it all and say, Wow. I think there's more to life than all of what we've talked about in this world. It's quite empty, life without God. And he said to them, you will drink my cup. He actually prophesied to the two, you're going to die because of your faith, because you followed me. So you see, the sons of Zebedee were actually going to be persecuted because of their faith. Sabi ni Lord, oh yeah. You're going to drink the cup. You're going to die because you followed me. But for me to grant who will be on my right or in my left, it's not my business. It's the Father's job on who will get to sit on the right and to the left for whom uh, it has been prepared by my Father. What was Jesus saying? James, John, don't make it a goal to sit on my left or in my right. Just live your life the way a Christian should live. Learning how to die to yourself. Living a life of sacrifice. Just live that way. You're going to drink my cup. But don't make it a go because I wouldn't even know who will be at my right or in my left. And when the ten heard it, they were indignant at the two brothers. Narinig nung sampo. Ang kapal! Grab! Grabe kayo! Traitor kayong dalawa. Sa grupo-grupo. Grabe. Tinanong, naisip nila yun. Hindi natin naisip. Right? Because they didn't know the answer. If Jesus was going to grant or not. It was like, they were so mad. But look, again, the heart. Why were they mad? Why be mad? The proper response should be, <laughs> you question. Uh, let's move on. Come on. Let's go. 
right? That's a stupid question to ask, right? But rather, they were mad. They were affected by it. Why would you ask that question? They want to one-up the other. But Jesus called them. Oh, teachable moment. Come here, guys. Jesus called them and said, Come, you know that the Lord of the Gentiles, the rulers of the Gentiles, lorded over them, and their great ones exercised authority over them. What was Jesus saying? Mga brothers, you all know in the world we live in today, the Gentile world, to be great, it means you have power, you can control, some even abuse. They have authority over people. They lord it over. They don't rule. They lord it over. I don't care how you feel. Basta do it. Because I said so. That's how the Gentile works. And that's a great leader. A great Gentile leader. One who lords it over. And the Lord was saying, that's not the way in my kingdom. You want to be great in my kingdom? It shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your what? Servant. Oh, he uses a word here that many do not like. You want to be great? Yeah. Be a servant. Okay. Tumulong ka. Be a helper. Wherever you go and somebody needs help, you help. Have that kind of disposition in life. You're a servant. Ready to serve. Happy to serve. <laughs> right? Saying, whatever I can, I'll do it. Why? And, and, and I don't care who gets the credit. Let me just help. The Lord says, that's the way to be great. Be a servant. Okay? A servant is not picky with the responsibilities. He would do whatever is required. And then say, let, let, let me do it because I'm a servant. You see, the path or the key to greatness is not found in positions or power controls, but in character, the heart. Now, tanong mo sarili mo, my servant's heart ka ba? Do you have a servant's heart? Do you have a character of a servant? Right? Saying, Lord, whatever you say, I will do. No matter how hard. Servant. But then Jesus did not stop there. And I want you to listen carefully. He says, whoever of you wants to be great, you must be a servant. But whoever wants to be first, Sino dito gusto maging first? Right? Lahat gusto maging first, di ba? He says, whoever wants to be first among you must be your what? Ooh, slave. Servant, slave, two different worlds. To be a servant in the New Testament is to have a little control and wages, income. To be a slave is to have no ownership of your life. So Jesus said, you want to be great? Serve. Serve in whatever ways you can. If you're free, serve. Don't think about yourself. Don't get the credit. It's just serve. You want to be great? Serve. But you want to be first? Be a slave. Slave is the word doulos. When somebody declares, I am a doulos for Christ, the word doulos is like, wow! Sinabi mo yan! Wow! I salute you. You're a doulos, a bond servant of Christ. It's used to that highest dignity, more than a servant. To declare, I am a follower of Jesus, a slave of Christ, as how Paul would write it, it was like, it is to the highest dignity that the person would choose to be a bond slave for Christ. Whether we admit it or not, and listen to this again, this is a hard truth that you might not agree with. All of us were a slave of someone or something. Isipin niyo mabuti yan. We're a dulos for someone or something. The question is, who is that or what is that? You're a slave of. You think about it. 
many of what you do today and what you'll be doing today and tomorrow and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday is because you are serving a master. And you're a doulos for someone or something. Paul decides, I am a bond servant of Christ. Many of my friends have decided to be doulos for Christ. Not an easy one, but a fulfilling one. Now, how could Jesus demand this from us and say, be a slave for, for me? Because if you want to be great, be a servant. If you want to be first, be a doulos, be a bond servant. You know why? Because he exemplified it. He said, even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And sabi niya, ultimately, I'm saying this because I'm doing it. I'm dying for you guys. It's no longer my decision. Not my will, but your will be done. Gave his life as a ransom for many. The price to pay for greatness is dying to one's self. You want to be great? Learn how to die to oneself. You might not be featured in any magazines or any, any blog. Wala. Nobody's going to tag you on social media. And in fact, if somebody tags you, it doesn't matter. You actually don't care. Because I'm, I'm, I'm created not to receive glory to give it. And I know I'm preaching to everyone, including myself. Sipi mo, no? Buhay. Kano ka simple. If we live this truth. I'm not created to receive glory. I'm created to give glory back to God. Imagine if everybody lives this way. In this room. Ay, grabe. Husbands. Halikan tayo ng mga misis natin mamayang gabi. What happened to you? You go to work tomorrow, people will just be, why are you not taking the credit? That's yours. Doesn't matter. I just do meaningful work. I do it for God. I get promoted, it's God. I don't get promoted, it's God. Unfair treatment that I don't get promoted and the other gets promoted. Ah, it's okay. Right? Because now we're realizing, wow, the way to be first is not to be a slave to my work, but to be a slave of Christ. And do it for His kingdom. Look at, look at this, how the emphasis of this concept we're in the letters of the New Testament, Philippians 2. Jesus made himself what? Nothing. Like a bond servant. No ownership, no rights. Made himself nothing. Right? By taking the very nature of a what? Of a servant. Being made in human likeness. I don't get any Lord. From King of Kings and Lord of Lords goes down. To earth in human form. Born in what? In a manger. Where only the shepherds visited that night. And then it says, And being found in human form, He humbled Himself by becoming obedient to the point of death. Even death on the cross. Mama Zebedee bowed down. For selfish crown, Jesus humbled himself to the point of death. 
two kinds of greatness, even death on a cross. And look at the result. Therefore, God is highly exalted Jesus and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. That in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven, on earth, under the earth, even hell will bow down. Because he became obedient to the point of death. Jesus was not after the crown. Jesus came down to seek and save the lost. How? Through the path of the cross. And through the cross, Jesus, God exalted Jesus and gave him the name that is above every name. And every tongue confess. And imagine how many songs are written every day just confessing Jesus is Lord. How many of you came here today confessing Jesus is Lord? The prime, ultimate, example, peg, model that we would want to look at are not the great men of women in business or the billionaires of our society or the millennial with the sports car that has still 30 months to pay. 30 years, I mean. It's this Jesus who became obedient to the point of death. And now his name is exalted above every name. I want you to think through this. Let this be a heart check for us. How much of the cross is in us? Who receives the glory? How do I live my life now? Is it for the glory of me? For the glory of God? Something to pray about and think about. Can we bow down our heads and pray?